Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of TechniBytes. Uh, tonight's episode is with someone very special, uh, Mr. Peter Cowley, the president of the European Business Angel Network. Uh, Peter, welcome on board, and thank you for joining us. Good. I'll just start my video. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Peter. Excellent. Good. Thanks for joining. How's everything going? Uh, good. Yeah, it's a lovely sunny day here in Cambridge in the UK. Obviously, we're, the UK is in the lockdown still after four weeks, so there's not much interaction with human beings. Um, I'm spending some of the time here uh, in my own place and some with my partner about 40 kilometers away. Uh, and here I'm here today and then back there tomorrow. So, yeah, so life's different. Life is full of Zoom meetings. The whole of our lives are eight, ten hours a day of meetings. <laughs> Very different. Yeah, life. yeah. It's even more stressful than before, isn't it? It is, exactly. Though one should, can't really complain. I mean, there, there's a lot of people in much worse conditions than, than I am here. So how is it in Egypt? What, what is the, what's happening there? So we have a curfew. We have a curfew in the evening. Starts 8 p.m. It was 7. Now it's 8. So things are, you know, not uh, until now. Seem, they seem to be under control. So yeah. okay. we just, you know, hope everything passes smoothly while everyone hangs in there. Exactly, yeah. Sorry, I'll just adjust the uh, focus. That's the wrong way. Carry on talking anyway. <laughs> yeah. This is a list of some of the businesses I've invested in behind me. It's not the full That's... list. It's, yeah. it's, it's actually from brilliant. the Cambridge Angels, but I've co invested in most of the deals behind me. I can't read them from here because it's a mirror image on Zoom. But... <laughs> yeah, we'll have someone decrypt the, yeah. the, the logos and announce yeah, They're on my website. Like, my investments are on my website anyway. So. 
Good. Brilliant. Well, thanks again for joining us, Peter. And uh, you know, to introduce you to the audience, we have we have several people joining us from all over the world. Uh, if you guys can type in where are you joining us from, and um, we today we'd like to welcome Mr. Peter Cowley. He was named as the UK Business Angel of the Year in 2014, 2015, and the Best Angel of the World by the World Business Angel Investment Forum in 2017. So, you know, Peter, if you can tell us how long have you been an angel investor and how exactly did you get into this? Yeah, so I, I, my career, really, if you can call it a career, is, is an entrepreneur, not an angel investor. So I, although some of the people I co-invest with have been angel investors for 20 years or 25 years, I've only been an investor for about 10 or 11 years, 12 years, maybe. So I, I've been an entrepreneur since the, well, my first entrepreneurial experience was in the 70s. Uh, no, yeah, the 70s, early, mid 70s, so 40 years ago. But but I've basically set up, founded or co-founded businesses in technology and property development, property, other, other property businesses for the best part of 40 years. And then about 12 years ago, um, I invested in a business here in Cambridge. I was mentoring somebody and... Uh, I didn't even know what the word angel is, what it was at that point, but I found during the journey, which was quite exciting, I put a bit of money in and joined the board, helped him on the journey, and then we exited it. And during that, I realized what an angel investor was. And I just happened to have a, 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 a social friend, a chap that had made money in the States, floating a company and selling it. And he'd been angel investing in um, Philadelphia. And he'd come back to the UK and set up an angel group here in Cambridge, which is Cambridge Angels, which we'll mention later. And so I joined that group and it's that group has given me deal flow and education and everything. And I've given a lot back. So I sort of accidentally got into angel investing and I've just found that it's actually better to be an angel investor in many ways than it is being an entrepreneur. Although having said that, I still have two entrepreneurial businesses. Brilliant. That's amazing. And uh, you were uh, you were also the president of the European Business Angel Network uh, since 2018. And uh, would, would you tell us more about IBAN and what does the what does IBAN do? What are the main activities? Do they support investors? Do they directly support in startups? If you can tell us more about the yeah. activities, it would be great. So my background, I, I, as well as just getting in, interested in angel investing and investing and helping startups, I was also interested in the whole ecosystem. So I started visiting some of the conferences around the world about eight or nine years ago, the Angel Capital Association in the States. Uh, I went to Bangalore, I went to Singapore, et cetera, and sort of built up a picture. I got involved with the trade body here in the UK, the U U UK BAA, it's called United Kingdom Business Angel Association. Some years ago, they gave me this Angel of the Year Award, um, six years ago now. And then about two or three years ago, the previous president, Candice, who was hoping to join this call, actually, we had an email from her earlier, didn't we, um, is, asked me if I would like to be president for the next term from the middle of 2018, which I accepted. So uh, this was a combination of my, because I'm a practitioner, really, not all people who are involved in EVAN, I'll let you describe the organization, are as active as an angel. In fact, there are many angels, with, I've done over 70 deals, that are as active. I noticed you had David Rose on, he's done more deals, but he's been doing it probably three times longer than me, four times longer. The European Business Angel Network was set up 21 years ago now, uh, in the late 90s, to provide a uh, support network for initially for entrepreneurs and then it's gradually morphed to be for investors as well so we provide networking events we provide education we provide re research we provide advocacy so helping the European Union in Brussels where we're based and other governments around Europe in um, understanding what how to help entrepreneurs and how to help angels so it's it's a trade body for the whole of Europe, though we have many members outside Europe, we have members in, um, that, uh, you know, even on the board, I have members in Turkey and in, in Russia, and then we have a lot of members in, in Africa, uh, etc. So we have about 170 members, of which probably about 100 or so in Europe. So we are a sort of, we don't invest ourselves, we have a platform which allows that, but a lot of the time it's to do with connecting, connecting entrepreneurs and, and angel investors and connecting doing cross-border investments as well. You're part of the MedAngel group, aren't you, which is um, we, we've been involved with uh, helping you set that up. And this is to do with getting capital from one part of 
the world, or in this case, perhaps Europe, and another part of the world. Tommy Davey, who I know well, and in fact, I've just joined the board of the Global Business Angel Network um, in the last few days, and Tommy's on that board as well. Um, capital is, as we know, is, is not concentrated, but there's more capital in certain areas of the world than there are in others. I mean, in, in, in Europe, there's a strong bias in the UK. Something like half of early stage capital comes out of the UK for the whole of Europe. You know, the UK isn't going to be part of Europe for much longer, but uh, and this is because of our tax incentives. So IBAN is trying to do that, to build these connections to allow capital to flow across borders. Brilliant. And I've attended the Brussels event, the Winter Summit in Brussels by IBAN. It was uh, brilliant in my capacity as uh, representing Med Angels. So, yeah, these, these are amazing efforts done by IBAN, uh, led by yourself and uh, all the board. But also there's the Cambridge Business Angels that you are also uh, chairman of the board. Can you tell us more about uh, the, this group? Do they, uh, how do they invest and how is it structured? Yeah, so this is a group I say I joined. I was very lucky to, I, I actually studied here in Cambridge a long time ago and then went away for 25 years. And my first um, proper entrepreneurial journey was in Bavaria. So I moved to Germany for five years and set up a business over there. Came back to the UK and then about 15, 16 years ago, uh, so I'm in mid, my mid 60s. Uh, so about when I was about 50, I came back to um, Cambridge and, and joined the Cambridge Angels. It's a very active group. I mean, by head, by angel, we're the most active, I believe, in the whole of Europe. Not the most active in volume, because if you take the Danishal, Dan Dan sorry, the Danish angels, are, the whole country is one angel group. The whole of Finland is one angel group. The whole of Estonia is one angel group. So clearly the numbers are higher then. But per head of population, per head of the group, we're about 60 members. We have some corporate members. We invested, I don't know what, what currency shall I use, euros. We invested about 55 million euros last year as an angel group, which puts us in, looks at, makes us look like a, you know, almost a VC in terms of the yep. capital deployed. I mean, most VCs will, VCs will deploy about a sixth or so of their fund every year. So that's about 300 million euro, which, you know, in Egypt, that might be one of the biggest VCs you have over there. Um, but we're not just money. We are 70% of the, uh, including me, of course, of the angels have exited a business, an entrepreneurial business, and all of them have been in technology. So we have seen what it's like to be an entrepreneur with all the ups and downs and all the stuff that happens. And so we, we, we um, hopefully, and <laughs> obviously not every entrepreneur agrees, but hopefully we can assist the journeys very well. We're also, of course, really well connected to future stage funding. We're connected well to uh, exit partners. We've got a, a good reputation here in Cambridge, for instance, to sell to the big tech giants like um, Oracle and, and Amazon and, and um, Apple, et cetera, uh, not Facebook yet, but Google in, in, in the West, on the West Coast. So yeah, the, the whole journey from mentoring, helping build around the next round all the way on, um, this ecosystem here in Cambridge, it's very small, we're only 120,000 people here in Cambridge, is particularly strong. And the Cambridge Business Angel, there is another angel group called Cambridge Capital Group, and there are a number of VCs here in Cambridge, but it's, uh, it's a great group to belong to. I've also built some lifelong friendships out of the group as well. That's, that's amazing. And, and uh, one of the most important things, as you highlighted, is that entrepreneurs have been there, done that, done all the mistakes and done all the successes. So they are the best angel investors. And it's just not just about capital. It's about mentorship and guidance and support and connection to further investment opportunities. So that's... Uh, that's amazing. And back to your entrepreneurial journey, Peter, you founded a company, Ept Computing, that was found, that was acquired by Redgate Software, I think in 2009. Yes. And uh, yeah. this was your company. What did that company do and what did, how did that exit happen? I mean, as a, a computing, computing company, a software company, what did it specialize in? Yes, and, and that is the where I got into Asian investing. I'm better known in the area for the companies I've formed myself, like CamData and Starfish Developments and ZCam and a number of other business, Starbridge, a number of other businesses. But that one you, you picked on was the one where I was mentoring uh, somebody who'd done the same course here at the university as me, Computer Science, and I invested in the first round. It had two founders. Even in that, I mean, some of this is in one of my books, um, 
is the, one of the founders left after nine or 12 months. You know, this is quite a big deal. So I experienced that before I even knew what the word angel was. That's really quite difficult to do. And we built it on the basis of, in many cases, you know, so yeah, yeah, it, well, it used to happen more. It doesn't happen so much now, but it built it as a service business that then morphed into a product business. And in fact, the product we developed, we developed for the exiting founder. So the founder left and set up another business and then contracted back to us. We did some work and we productized that and then we sold that on. So the journey was about two and a half, three years long. It was a 17 times multiple of my money, which was a good number. I didn't put much in, so I didn't. You know, we have this term, or you might have heard car changing, house changing, life changing. Have you heard that term? Yep. <laughs> this was car changing, but certainly not house changing. Obviously the cost of a house varies. <laughs> but, uh, so it was, it was a relatively small amount of money, but it was still exciting and I learned a lot from it. Brilliant. And uh, so you're yeah, moving on to, you know, when, when you started angel investing until today, you've invested in more than 70 companies uh, yourself and, and you have a, a, a very decent portfolio. Can you tell us more about your portfolio, your investment strategy, the exits that you had. Yeah, I, I, I'm particularly open about that. And if anybody looks at my website, petercowley.org, you'll see a, a, some background on me, obviously, but also you'll see all my criteria, you'll see all my portfolio, you'll see my successes and failures and my view on why they failed. And I'm pretty pretty and i hope i don't get sued by it <laughs> there's one of them particularly that if you read it you'll see what i mean by that because it was a a, a a poor behavior by an entrepreneur that was uh, anyway so my uh, my investment criteria are there really to to stop the flow of deals coming to me because i get not now during covid times of course but i get about 1500 deals a year or I did get those coming in and they filter down and what i invest in is the same as any um, active angel investor. We invest in things that we understand, basically. It's much easier to um, get to know some entrepreneurs and get to know some technology, because I generally invest in technology, if I actually understand the technology. Not completely. I mean, I was a programmer in the 70s and 80s, but I couldn't program now. So I, I have no clue, you know, how to write an API that does a, a call of some sort onto a website. It doesn't really matter. I understand the context behind that. And because I've been doing this so long and I've looked at 10 or 12,000 business plans, I do have a very shallow, very, very wide knowledge of all kinds of things, not just technology, but routes to market and pricing and et cetera, et cetera, cost of customer acquisition, et cetera. So those criteria I've built up over time, and they're based on what I like, which is business to business generally and technology. Exits and failures, I've learned a huge amount from that. I have. I give hour-long talks just on the war stories I've built up. So exits, I had a, a great exit just recently, um, which again is on the website, which was 107 times my money. This paid back everything I've ever invested. That's the dream of every any angel investor because it means the rest of the portfolio is then free. You know, it doesn't really matter what happens. We hope it all does well. It won't do, of course, statistically, it never goes well for everybody. And um, so the failures are due to all kinds of reasons. In the end, it's generally due to people, though. It's just due to the founders not being flexible enough or, or something. Sometimes it can be, you know, obviously competition can come up behind. There can be a, a market um, transition, which, of course, COVID is, is in a massive way throughout many, many countries, including the UK. Um, it could be that the technology didn't work, you know, it just, you know, we bet on some technology working, never got there. There's lots of reasons why, uh, but the fact that successes are wide and interesting and sometimes difficult as well. I mean, this, you can imagine with, with my 14 companies, my 71 investments, I've been on 85 or am on. I have been or am on 85 journeys and you know each journey is different and unique and interesting and sometimes painful and sometimes very happy uh, i can't summarize it quickly in a short time this would be a whole hour's call really yeah 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 so uh, I'll, I'll jump to a question and uh, so that we can take as many questions that there are we have a question from malden that uh that uh, he's asking do you have a favorite branch that you like to invest in a certain sector and the second question, which are the most important things that you look at when you're investing in a young startup? Yeah, so favorite branch. Um, yeah, within the constraints of being business to business generally, not always, but almost always, and technology. 
then I don't have anything within that. I don't do much life sciences. I don't understand. I do do some and occasionally, and I'll explain why in a moment when we get to the second question. But it's mainly um, so of sensing, you know, clean tech, um, some software, but it'll be enterprise software, not consumer software. And again, um, I suggest you just look at my website, petercarroll.org, you'll see the sort of things I invest in and what, you know, why I invest in those. The, um, the second question about what I look for, it took me about four years to realize actually the business plan is not relevant. The only relevance is the people. So, so I invest in people. So obviously they need a business plan. They need something that they're focusing on, concentrating on. The chance of the business plan being what they exit with isn't all that high. They'll be pivoted and moving around the way. But it's whether the people will listen, whether they'll, I believe they'll be able to solve problems, whether they'll be able to build a team, whether they, et cetera, et cetera, whether they'll mature with the business as it grows. So it's me getting to know the people. And what, so if you look at it from the ancient, investor viewpoint what we're doing when we write a check i'll just look at you as the only person on the screen here as the entrepreneur if i write a check and give it to you i'm trusting you to use that money in a wise prudent way and grow that money because uh, i know that in many cases you know something like three quarters of all startups that raise funding will fail uh, certainly in, in in western europe less so where you are in fact because there are more service businesses there so there's the failure rate will be less it's certainly much less in africa actually um, and so I'm, I'm trusting that you will grow that. So therefore, it's you, you and your entrepreneurial co-founder, because I generally invest in two people, sometimes three, very rarely one, that I'm, I'm investing in. So it's, I want to get to know you. And as I say many times for entrepreneurs, you've got to get to know me. You've got to make sure I and the other investors I'm with will behave ourselves on the journey and, and reinvest when needed. And, you know, I've seen so much bad behavior on both sides of the table. Does that help? Yeah, it helps very much, of course. And uh, it's people, people, people. That's what we say. These are the yeah. this is the most. They will be able to make it or break it. But you mentioned the the the, the size of deal flow that you're getting uh, all the time. What is the deal flow? What does the deal flow look like now during the pandemic? And are you investing during these times? Um, the deal flow has gone down a bit. But, you know, we're only in the UK, we're about five weeks into lockdown. So I was still seeing entrepreneurs about five weeks ago. I'm still investing. What I'm not doing is investing in new deals. So the portfolio I have is 50 odd companies. Some are doing extremely well. I, for instance, I'm invested, which is on, I don't know, it's, oh, it'll be behind us here somewhere, a company called Cambridge Mask. Can you imagine, you know, they turned over a couple of million dollars last year. They're probably doing $2 million a month now. You know, it's just absolutely phenomenal the amount there. Other companies, are, I've got one company I'm on the board of, which is doing about 6 million euros a year turnover run rate uh, until the 23rd of March. And they're doing naught down to zero because the product they've got, which is a business product, needs access to people's homes to install it. And nobody's got access to any homes. So that varies. So I'm spending my time helping entrepreneurs in my portfolio and helping them work out how to use whatever schemes there are for protection and writing checks to protect that. Therefore, I'm not going to spend any time yet looking at new deals. Having said that, and um, I've just talked to a number of people about this today, it shouldn't stop entrepreneurs caring. They should just accept it's going to take several months longer to raise funding than it would do in non-COVID times. This is assuming that the globe and the you know our, our leaders around the globe get things right in our respective countries in terms of the way they're going to let business return to a level of normality. And that normality won't be the same. I think we're all accepting, certainly here in, in Europe, that we will do less face-to-face -face meetings and there will definitely be more of this sort of thing which has got its advantages, of course, in terms of travel and its disadvantages in terms of human interaction. So, yeah, I'm looking at deals, but I won't invest, I suspect, in any new deals for many months. So. Yeah, yeah. So we have another question from Mohammed. He's asking what angel investors will be caring for after that crisis, how to persuade. And the second part, is it safe to start now as a founder or how much time should you wait to start? 
Yeah, so what are they looking for? We'll come to in a minute, but I think I've just about answered the other one. Carry on yeah. talking to people. Some angels are too busy with their own portfolio, but the ones who've got a smaller portfolio will give some time. But in my view, I, I have a statistic on my website, which is over about 50 deals I've looked at. It's 5.2 months from the point of contact, the point of close, of which about three months is getting to know each other and getting the business plan in shape, and two months is the legals before the checks are written. So that's my average fight. People talk about a check arriving immediately. That is not how I work at all. It's five months. Yeah. So at the moment, it feels like that five months will become eight or nine or maybe 10 months. But again, it depends what happens towards the back of the year. In terms of the other half of the question, there are two elements to that. One is clearly there are new opportunities out there that will be driven by this. I mean, we can see this with the share price of Zoom. We can see this in the fact that certainly in the UK, um, finally, uh, primary care, G what we call GPs, general practitioners, doctors, are seeing people on video connections. They've always said no, no, no. And now they're finding they actually quite enjoy it. So there's a whole stack of new opportunities. There'll be a lot of social interaction ones. There'll be travel ones. There'll be a load of positive benefit. There'll be a lot that will actually not work so well. So for instance, I suspect that the airline industry is going to be in for a very long time. And it might be the beginning of a you know, forever that it will dec decline and never recover to what it was like last year. Who knows? Hospitality will struggle, et cetera, et cetera. What um, is important though, I mean, need to say is that because of the level of uncertainty at the moment of the future, the valuations are not clear. So all, although I, I'm not sure what it's like in Egypt, but valuations have crept up to very high levels here in the UK, as in 10 times what it was 10 years ago, you know, and, and the number of exits hadn't gone up 10 times, the value of those exits hadn't gone up 10 times. So in principle, statistically, the valuations are too high. So those are coming, definitely will come down. It's not clear how yet, because deals aren't being done yet. Yep. There are also instruments in the UK for called convertible loans. And, and so we can delay the uh, decision on the valuation till later, so you take a discount on the net, on the round, which is a fixed price later. I suspect there'll be many more of those where people are saying, until we have some clarity about what the world looks like, we just can't give you. We'll give you some money, but we can't give you a value yet. Yeah, so they'll settle on uh, convertible notes rather than price rounds. I think so. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, I also agree. It's very interesting to look at uh, uh, what's happening in the UK and Europe and what's happening in the Middle East. As you mentioned, uh, the portfolio size of the Middle East is much smaller. And thus, the problems and issues that the investors are getting from their startups are less. Uh, so there are more investors looking into investing in new deals. And surprisingly, um, on the angel front, on two networks that I'm involved with, we're getting more people who are interested to become angel investors and looking as that, at that as a new asset class for investing, which is uh, interesting. Deals are being done yet, as you mentioned, but a lot of interest is showing. Yeah, and part of that is the fact that there's no asset class that's got a reasonable return at the moment, isn't it? I mean, in the UK, inflation is a bit above the interest rate. So that means if you put your money in the bank, it gradually decreases because you're not getting enough as inflation. Of course, inflation may go completely madly high over the next few years or not. Who knows? So where do you, where do you put your money? You can't at the moment put it in, in property. The, you know, certainly under COVID times, you can't. So where do you do it? There's also, you know, particularly if it was crowdfunding, there's quite a lot of excitement of putting a small amount of money in a business. I mean, I, I don't know if you have crowdfunding in, in um, Egypt, but in the UK, we started very early, much earlier than, say, uh, America. And some crowdfunding is to do with consumer product championing. So people will write a check and also be a champion for that organization. So, yeah, there is a lot of um, positive benefit of doing it, providing you do it sensibly. Uh, you've frozen, Tarek. I don't know whether you can hear me now. Is anybody else on the line? Can, I don't know whether it, can somebody is. Tarek is frozen. Is he okay? <laughs> Hi, Peter. Yeah, Hi I'm going to be you're, back you're in the last yeah. second. Okay. So that, yeah, yeah, fine. Back. 
So, Tarek, you're you you're mute. You're on mute, as the fate the Zoom says nowadays. You I admit um, you, did, I, you went for it, you froze for about 30, 40, 50 seconds. Yep. Did, you, did you hear me or? I did not hear. I hope everyone else did. We were talking about the portfolio size and what's happening in the Middle East versus Europe. Yeah, they did hear. We can see that on the chats there. So, uh, okay. yeah. So I'm just saying that it's it's an exciting asset class. It's a super risky asset class, you know, and the only way to um, mitigate, not mitigate, that's the wrong word. The only way to reduce your risk is to have a wider portfolio. There is no guarantee of any one business that's had investment succeeding. I guarantee that statement. There's no, there's no way you can assume that you're going to pick the right stocks. Therefore, you need a wider portfolio. That's really difficult in some places, in, you know, in, in some countries, because there isn't a choice there. I, I'm in the position, I know I'm in a position here in Cambridge where I have far too much choice, and I shouldn't really preach about this because it's unfair, because I have, you know, within, I think, 200 metres of here, because we have a WeWork, there's probably 400 companies I could invest in, <laughs> you know. And, and, you know, in Alexandria, there may not only be 100 companies in total or something, early stage companies. But if you can turn it into a portfolio, you must do that. Yeah, yeah. And so we have another question from an anonymous attendee asking about how to improve the networking events such as EBAN and others to increase capital raises, because many times participating in such events don't usually lead to any deal closures. That's really difficult, isn't it? This is something that yeah. EBAN is working on strongly. I, I'll come back to, and this is to do with cross-border investing, etc., and something you're finding with MedAngels. Yeah. It appears to me, you know, as I said, a, an angel invests in an, one human being, the angel invests in another one, the entrepreneur. If those two aren't at the moment, it might change with, you know, the way that Zoom's working and everything, and, and conferencing, if those two aren't in the same room, it's more difficult to invest. This is the current situation. So in order to get the capital from here to here, if they're in a different country, you need an intermediary in here. And you don't want necessarily, you could have a crowdfunding platform, of course, that's an intermediary, isn't it? You could have a corporate finance broker in here, which charges a fee. But what we're trying to do in EBAN is to have this intermediary as another angel in this country. So if somebody here knows, so these two know each other in the same country, this person is investing in this entrepreneur, and then this person in this country knows this angel here, even though there's a, a distance here. So therefore, if this person invests in the entrepreneur, this person here will co-invest. So that is how we're trying to do with the cross-border investing. So this is getting the angels together to get to know each other, so that then when this one, this one says, I've got a deal here in Alexandria, this person's based in Marseille, say they would co-invest with them. And then this person here will be close to the entrepreneur and will assist them hopefully and certainly monitor them and act as some governance. So this is because it's still a, it requires a human trust situation to invest. Um, I doubt we'll ever get to the point where there isn't trust there, but I think we'll get to the point where the fact that we're not in the same country and we're using some sort of um, technology to do this, but I'm not sure how quickly. I have some grey hair, as you can tell. And so I come from a different generation. I'm probably best part of a generation older than you, I suspect, or getting on that way. And, and maybe I have different views. But if the, you know, the youngster, the more young people are probably more able to, to trust given this environment. But personally, I can't see myself ever investing unless I've been in the same room as the entrepreneur at some point. If I'm going to write a big check, I'm going to write a small check for you know, crowdfunding for $50, $100, $500 or something like that, I don't think I have a problem. But if we're going to write a $10,000 check or a $20,000 check, I really do still personally but need to do that. Therefore, you need the intermediary there to, to cause that to happen. Is that answering the question? Perfectly, yeah. And it's, it's, it all boils down to trust. So you're trusting the team and the entrepreneurs to do what they do best. You're trusting... The other investors who are you uh, in other countries that they are leading deals that have people who can make that. And Rami's question here is also asking about the team and people. I think Rami's from Dubai. 
And he's asking, how do you evaluate this? Is it the passion, experience, character? What's the prerequisites and the type of entrepreneur you yeah. want to invest in? I'm just at this point, this, this is my book, Invested Investor. There, I have actually a second book. I just, this is an advert, sorry about that. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm allowed to advertise. Um, so this book is for, aim, this is mainly aimed at angels who want to be better angels. I'll answer the question in a moment from this. Though it, at least two thirds of the books are, are bought by uh, entrepreneurs wanting to work out how to get angel investing. And Tarek's frozen again, but I'm, and the rest of the audience is hopefully there. This is aimed at entrepreneurs, from founders to other founders. So I'll carry on talking, even though Tarek probably can't hear me. Oh, Tarek, he can, can, good. So th this, is, this is the sort of $64,000 question. How do I, as an angel, work out how to trust the team? And of course, for me, it's a lot easier because I've got so much experience of doing this. I sort of know what to, to, to ask and so on. I'll, I'll get it wrong many times. Many of my failures are because I've got something wrong somewhere. I mean, there are occasions where you get two founders and I've had this and the founders fall out. I mean, it sort of happened that very first journey I had 12 years ago. You can't really work that out very easily. You can't ask the right questions. So you've got to do this by in the same way as you're forming any relationship, if you're forming a supplier-customer relationship, if you're forming an emotional relationship with a girlfriend or a, a, you know, a wife-to-be, you do this by building up, spending time together and just working out whether you like. So actually liking the person is actually quite important because if you're liking them, then there's trust built up. You know, that's why you build a portfolio. It's portfolio diversity is key, somebody said. That's exactly right. You build a portfolio because you can't get it right necessarily. But if you can build up a, a view, and of course, the best way of doing this is to follow somebody else who's done it before, like me or other people, because they've already started to build up how to do the interviewing, how to get to know somebody. So if you can invest as an angel alongside another angel who's been doing it before, which is why I've learned so much from the group I'm in, you know, which I've been chair of recently. So I can't give you a straight answer, but it's it's to do with human human trust being built up. Perfect. And uh, Peter, can you tell us where we can uh, buy your book? Is it on Amazon? Is it uh, downloadable? Uh, yes, it's on Amazon. This book, which is the first ones uh, available on the Kindle, on um, printed form, and on Audible book. We're talking about an Audible. Um, this one is just uh, on Kindle and printed. I can't guarantee you can get it in your country. It depends where you're coming from because not everybody has Amazon, but sometimes you can get a, a mate to send you one. But if you're prepared to take the Kindle, I suspect the Kindle's available, the Kindle version in most countries. And this yeah. basically, this one here is, it's, they're both full of anecdotes. They're both, it, and people say when they read this, it feels like they're talking to me. So this is me talking and, and but it's full of other anecdotes from other people who've experienced it. This is not me. This is a hundred entrepreneurs talking to other entrepreneurs. Think of it as somebody who's three or four years ahead of you on the journey, trying to prevent you making too many mistakes. Great, thanks Peter. Uh, we'll also share the links with everyone. Uh, once we get, you know, the team will share that so that you can see what's, whatever suits you guys and better uh, that, order the book. So uh, Ziad is asking a question, if you see any difference between regions or countries on investment fundam fundamentals, um, what, what differences do you see? I mean, there are a lot of differences. There are, I mean, um, in the UK, we have, as I said earlier, these strong tax incentives and quite a lot of people invest because of the incentives. Again, Tarek, you've gone, gone uh, you're frozen, but I hope you can hear me. Um, I can hear you. You can, good. Um, the level of, it, it does vary. I remember 10 years ago being in one of the old Eastern European countries and the skill sets of those people wasn't technology. It was the investors were in forestry or mining or agriculture and they didn't really understand what it was like, what the risks are of a technology business. Very difficult to take money from somebody like that. It's also quite, one thing you must understand as entrepreneurs is don't take money from a single investor, particularly a, an angel investor, because if that person doesn't follow on in the next round, if you need more money, it gives such a bad message to any potential incoming investor, and they're likely to want to control the business too strongly. So take you must the minimum you really should take in terms of angel investors and entrepreneurs is probably four or five, and the maximum probably 20 investors, unless you're going through a crowdfunding site. 
So, and, and it does vary a lot, the quality and various, um, the, uh, the connections they have for future funding. That's why, for instance, people, and we may have somebody here from Israel, that's why the Israelis tend to look straight away at the states for the next funding round, many of them, even though there's capital there. It, it, it is not easy being in a, a small country like Slovenia or Macedonia or maybe not so much Egypt, but there are lots of countries where there are lots of great, great entrepreneurs, but there really isn't much early stage capital. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, this is one of the things that we are also trying to tackle with the Mediterranean Angels, along with EBAN and ABAN, and seeing how can we support in creating new angel groups, act, giving access to capital in creative ways, working with governments to see how we can find uh, seed funding. And, and I think uh, we have a long way to, to go on that uh, journey, but it's all to support the uh, seed funding and angel investing so yeah, you're doing the right thing because you're getting the so sort of the north of the med and the south of the med to get to know each other aren't you and once the deals start happening they, they will it will leverage more deals happening so you just need to get those first deals occurring into the uh, migrant countries so. yeah 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 well we hope that you know we'll get over this uh, lockdown period so that we can get more face to face and Get, build the trust going on between the startups and the investors together so that we can uh, get the ball rolling. So, so, Peter, I'll ask you the last question. I know we took much of your time, but, uh, you know, during this whole uncertain time and the lockdown and the pandemic, what, I mean, post that era, the angel investing landscape, do you see that significantly affected, changed, what are your views and what is your advice to the entrepreneurs and the investors? I mean, this will vary, won't it? There's one of the issues in the UK is that the, um, because the stock markets have fallen so far, a lot of people who have wealth, because you, you can't be an angel investor unless you've got money to lose. You, mustn't, you must assume that once you've written a check into an entrepreneurial company, unless it's one that's already making revenues and maybe profitable, that uh, it will, it's lost money. So no, no angel should ever think they will definitely get their, all their money back again. And of course, this is coming from a pot of money, which has generally been in the stock market, and that has dropped by 20 or 30%. So the appetite for investing out of something where they've already lost a third of probably a reasonable sized number isn't going to be so good. So that will restrict some of the angel capital uh, there's no doubt maybe less so where you are than just here in the uk the if, i mean this is sort of pontificating about the future in a way that's very personal to my view so please don't take anything i've said today as being the truth it's just my view this is you're interviewing me as a human being i happen to have a lot of experience but it doesn't mean i'm right of course so it feels to me that the less this really changes and and we effectively socialist systems start to come back into place where this probably applies less in Africa but where um, people are given a universal basic income it appears to me that small businesses will be essential for the decades to come that the bigger businesses are just not agile enough so that the entrepreneurial activity will continue as I say many times for entrepreneurs, the best money you can get isn't from me, it's from customers, because customers will prove product market fit. However, there are many occasions where you can't get to customers, say you're discovering a new drug, you can't get there, you can't get customers immediately, you need capital, and that's true in many cases of other companies, uh, small companies. I, I believe that investment still will occur at this level. What, what will put people off though, is this if there's a long fallow period with no exits and this depends on the global economy so my crystal ball does not allow me to say what it's going to be like i heard recently which you may or may not like is that this recession which will be a big recession is going to be like a bathtub so we come off where the taps are we go along the bottom for one two three four five years and they will come back again at the far end where you put your feet. I hope this applies to Egyptian baths, of course. <laughs> you may not do this, but I mean British baths. <laughs> so we come up very rapidly, we go along for a period, then come up again slowly. I don't know. During the bottom, it, I just it's difficult to know where the capital is, what's happening, whether you know, whether you know, governments certainly will have to print money to keep economies alive, 
But where will the investment go? I, honestly, I'm not prepared to even guess at that. Yeah. I do enjoy what I do, I should say, and entrepreneurs will always be needed. It's just and yeah. entrepreneurs generally, if they're trying to build a business that hasn't got customers immediately, which is generally a service business, they will need external investors of some form, and they won't be able to get debt from banks generally, so they will need people who take the huge risk that we do and invest as equity. Perfect. Peter, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate that you uh, came with us today in Technibytes. We hope things get better and we hope to get you to Alexandria by end of September during our Techni Summit. Last year we had 9,000 people. Let's hope for the best and we get all, everyone together so that we can enjoy ourselves and uh, learn from each other. Thanks again for your time and we'll talk soon, Peter. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Cheers, bye. Bye bye. Right. So, uh, everyone, thank you for joining us today. The uh, recording is going to be on our Facebook page on YouTube if you want to uh, watch it again. And see you in our next episode. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye.